So a lot of the time when you're doing questions with regards to electric and magnetic fields here, you'll be asked to do calculations based on things regarding work and velocity. And what we'll be doing is we'll be taking a look at some examples that basically relate to concepts that we've learned before in involving forces, work and energy. Taking a look at this example, we've got a gold three plus ion. So we'll represent that diagrammatically with AG three plus. It's a cellular by an electric field that's created between two parallel plates. So we've got a parallel plate here. And you've got a parallel plate here. Now they're separated by 0 0.020 meters. The ion has a charge of plus three electrons and a mass of 3.28 times 10 to the negative 25 kilograms. The potential difference between the plates is a thousand volts. Now, when you have this charged particle in an electric field, this ion is initially at the positive plate, which is the one here on the left. It will therefore be attracted to the negative plate by the electric field that will be created, which just in this case goes from left to right. This will be a uniform electric field. Now, conceptually, basically there is this force, which is equal to QE, and that will apply to the charge over a distance, and then the work is force times distance. For our purposes though, we can just use the work in electric field formula, and that's W equals QB. Now Q in this case is the charge of the ion, which is three times the charge of the electron times the voltage, which we know is a thousand. And the charge of an electron you can look up. So when you multiply that all together, that will be a work in joules. And that's going to be 4.81 times 10 to the negative 16 joules. Now, work, remember, is energy. And when you apply this work onto this charge, what happened was that this charge started moving and it started moving to the right. And moving is going to be kinetic energy. So this work became kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared. Because this kinetic energy is 4.81, well, is the work, it's 4.81 times 10 to the negative 16. And we know m because it's given in the question all the way up here. So that means half times 3.28 times 10 to the negative 25 times v squared equals 4.81 times 10 to the negative 16. And then you basically solve for v squared. So that should be 4.81 times 10 to the negative 16 times 2 divided by 3.28 times 10 to the negative 25, giving you an answer of 2.93 times 10 to the 9. Of course, that then gives us an answer for the field. So that's how we do this question. We've talked before about how else you could potentially do it if you calculate the force and then used F equals MA to work out A and then use your super equation B squared equals U squared plus two AS. We won't do that here, um, but this is how you could do it from an energy work perspective. So in this question, we have a ball and I'm told the mass is four grams. And it's placed in a uniform electric field created by two parallel plates separated by five centimeters. And you're applying a voltage of 2000 volts to the plates. But the ball can then be seen to levitate, meaning it doesn't drop down. Identify the polarity and calculate the magnitude of the charge on the ball. Now, our starting point probably needs to be thinking about why this ball levitates. That's probably quite important. So 
if you think about it in terms of your free body diagram, for the ball to levitate, that means the net force on the ball must be zero. Now we know just from our force analysis that you're going to get a weight force equal mg going downward. So there must be a force that is balancing out this weight force. And this upward force, given the context of the question, is going to be your force from the electric field. So you're not really told, I guess, whether the electric field has the positive plate at the top or the bottom. So I guess then we can't really work out the polarity of the charge of the ball. So for my purposes here, I'm going to assume, and the question really should have been more specific here, but we're going to assume that the positive is at the bottom. No reason to do that, it could be other way, other way. But let's just say the positive is at the bottom and the negative is at the top. Now, if it's positive at the bottom and negative at the top, that means your electric field will go this way because the electric fields go from positive to negative. And so for your ball to experience an upward force, if my positive is at the bottom and negative is at the top, that means the polarity of this ball must be positive. That's the only way you're going to get that to happen. Of course, the other way it would happen if it was negative and positive at the top, negative at the bottom. We don't really know, so we'll assume it's this way. Now, for levitation, you need the forces to be cancelled out and be in equilibrium. So the force of the electric field must equal the weight force. Now, the weight force equals mg. Of course, the mass is 4 grams, which is 0 0.004 kilograms. So that's 0 0.004 times 9.8. And that gives you some answer of about 0 0.0392. Now, F equals QE, uh, your force of the electron is just QE. So we know QE must equal 0 0.0392 because these two equal. Now, Q is what we're trying to find. So we have to try and find E. Now, remember, when dealing with electric fields between plates, your electric field E equals V over D. In this case, V is 2000, as given in the question over here. And D is, well, five centimeters, as given in the question here, which, of course, you have to remember to change into meters. Give us an answer of 40,000. All right. So once you have that, you can then work out that Q must equal 0 0.0392 divided by 40,000. That gives you an answer of 9.8 times 10 to the negative seven, and given as a charge, your answer will be in coolers, C. And that's how you do this question. So you'll notice that the techniques of answering this question was quite straightforward and is very similar to the skills we've talked about before. You think about what's happening, the ball is levitating, that tells you that the net force is zero. You do your force analysis with your different forces, calculate what you know, use the formulas you know, and then basically solve for your unknown. And basically that's how you do it. Yeah.